Welcome to a walkthrough of the Text Blender. Note that other videos will show examples of what the Text Blender can do for you. There will be videos with cases, how to build up a web page using the Text Blender. There is a video showing how to install and set up the Text Blender. And there is also a video that shows how you can make your web pages online in the real internet. The first page in the Text Blender gives you a choice of several languages. In this version there are six languages. It also tells you that it has been made with support from the European Commission. At the bottom you see the navigation tabs. Those are used to navigate through the different areas of the text blender. First of all I will select English as the language. I click on English and then I click on a tab called Overview. On the Overview page there is an example of what the Text Blender can do for you. This is a sample web page. It also shows the five main steps to go through before you can make a web page. The first one is you decide do you want to start with a media like a YouTube video? Do you want audio? Do you have local videos you want to play in your web page? There is then a step where you type in different information for the end user like copyright notices, instructions what to do. Then there is the main build up page where you add together videos, graphics, blocks of text to build up your main page. And a rather important page because that's the idea of the text blender where you select dictionaries so that all words on your web page will be linked from one language to another language. Finally there is an overview page. Please note that this version of the Text Blender is from February 2010. Future versions may change slightly. The navigation tabs at the bottom indicate where you are. The yellow one is highlighted, meaning that you are in the overview area. You then click on the different tabs to navigate. Actually, it is your own choice which sequence you want to use. I would recommend that the first time to simply take them one by one and fill in the needed information. So I click on the media tab. There are four main options of media, either no media, a normal video player, an audio player or a video player for YouTube. I click on video player. To choose a video file for the web page there are two options. I can select and copy a local video file or if you know an address to an internet video you can click on that button. In most cases you would simply select and copy a local video file. So I click on that button. So the next step now is to choose a video file. I will have to look for the video file. The one I want is called Robomo Video. It is a WMV type of file. You also have options of MP4 videos, AVI videos. The Text Blender can handle all of those. So I click OK. The video has now been selected. When I later on export my web page, which is the very last step, the file will automatically be copied to the place where I export the web page to. So, my next step is to click on Instructions. You can also use an audio player, so I'll try to click on Audio Player. Again, we have two options, exactly like with the video player. You can select and copy a local audio file. You can use an internet audio. So, I'll click on the first one. I'll find in my source files an audio file called 1WMA and I can then continue with instructions. But I will go back to the media selections and show how to use a YouTube video. To use a YouTube video, I click on Video Player for YouTube. The instructions for a YouTube or Google video may appear more complicated, but in reality you go to a YouTube uh, web page where you look for a video, you start that video, and then you look for the field that says embed, which will give you some instructions. You need to copy that and then you click on embedded video information to paste it in. 
so let's go to a YouTube video place. I've located a small video on YouTube called the German Coast Guard. To make it play in the text bender, I need the information about the video. And that is found there. It's called Embed. So the next step is I highlight it, I right click it, copy. I could also have used Control C. This is the information that I need for the text blender. So I click on the embedded video information and I paste in the text. I could also have used Control V. So this is all which is needed by the text blender in order to play a YouTube video. I click OK and now I continue to instructions. There are four fields where you can enter text. The text up there will become a headline, which on the web page will end there. The text there is an instruction text for the end user. Like click on a word to look it up in a dictionary, that text will end there in a web page. There is a field where you can put in the address of a web page to link to. And that is when the end user clicks on the next button there, that will take the end user to that address. And finally, you can put in some uh, copyright information where the text comes from and who has the copyright to it. This page is where I built the main content of the web page. I can see that the final web page will start with an audio player, and that is the audio that I selected previously. I now want to enter a block of text. When I work with text blocks, I can either type in a text or I can paste in a text. I have prepared a text in Notepad. So I go to the first part of the text I want and I copy it. The best way to copy a text is with Control and then you press C. And I go back to the text blender. And I click on the bottom here that says Paste Text. If you paste in text from Microsoft Word, you might experience that the text begins with a lot of rubbish like font type, Times New Roman, etc, etc. In that case, you simply have to delete that part of the text. Otherwise, it will not work. If I want the first line in my text to become a bold headline in the final web page, I have to put in an asterisk. I put in an asterisk. In this version of the text blender, there are four buttons. One is the one I used to paste in the text, paste text. I could also have used Control V up here, but it's better to use this one. There is a button called Finish. That's the one I'll press when I finish pasting in the text. I can delete the text to make sure that everything has been deleted. I can also change font. I'll try to click on that one and I'm able to select different kinds of fonts and the, and the size of them. But it's important to understand that this does not change the font on the final web page. The reason why you can change fonts here is that for some languages it may be needed in order to see the text properly. So now I just click finish. As you can see now there is a text block under the audio player. I can also add media to my page by clicking the Add Media. It gives me two options. I can insert graphics or photos or I can insert a video and if video is chosen it will be a YouTube video. I'll show you that. So if I wanted a YouTube video to play in the web page I would have to type in the embed information, that's the one that can be found down there. Paste it in there and click OK. But this time I want to put in a photo, so I click Cancel. I therefore click Add Media again, select Graphics. I can now choose the graphics I want, so I search for it. 
I want it to have the underground. I click OK. And we can now see the structure of the final web page, an audio player, a block of text, a photo. I now want to enter a new block of text. Go back to my notepad. Copy the next part. Control C. Paste it in. I want the first line as a headline, so I enter an asterisk. I click Finish. I want another photo. I put in one more text block. paste text. In this case I don't want a headline so I just click finish. I'll take one more photo, click on graphics. I take one more text block. Control C paste text finish and one more photo again and the final block of text paste finish and this is all I want for my web page so I continue to select Dictionary. To select the dictionary, I choose the language of the text. The text was in English, so I click on the line called English. And here, that is where I select which dictionary language to link to, from English to. And I just try to select English, so it would look it up in a monolingual dictionary. But the end user can actually change the language. So, finally, I can click on a summary to see everything that I have selected. This version of Text Blender gives me a summary of all the selections, like the headline, if there is an audio player to start with, the instructions to the end user, the size of the different text blocks, uh, what the next button will link to, and the different copyright notices at the bottom. Should I want to change something, I can, for instance, go back to Main Content. I can there click on one of the text blocks if I have found that there is an error, edit it and click finish. You can click on export to export the final web page from any of the areas in the text blender. So let's click on export. It is now recommended to save your work because that will enable you later on at another point in time to restart the text blender with all your settings and all your entries there and you can go in and make changes. So that is what I'll do now. I've prepared an empty directory in the root that I call 00 demonstration. So I just save it there and now for the web page. And I want to save the web page in the same directory. Call it Fred and click enter. It now tells me that the file is ready to open. I also get an option again to save the changes. If I do this now, that will override the original text blender file, so I will say no. Copy the audio file and the photos that I use, and I click on the fret htm. Because this is a local file, I have to permit it to run the active content to allow to block content. Yes. An overview and brief history of the tube. It's over. End of story. Okay. No. You can now click on a word. Let's click on a word treat and look it up in an English to English dictionary, which is the one that I selected. If an end user is not satisfied with the selection of dictionary from English to English, the target language can be changed. For instance, if I want it in Danish, 
and I then click go and the word is then looked up in an English to Danish dictionary. Should I want to make changes I can go back to my text blender to the main content for instance I can change the first text delete it finish and then export the web page again export web page give it the same name yep to see the change I need to refresh the web page refresh an overview and brief history of the tube and the first part of the text has now disappeared you can learn more about the text blender and how to put the files online in the real internet by going to the web page called www.languages.dk click on the tools area and from there you can watch the different videos that shows how to do so enjoy